In this presentation, we will study charge densities in a semiconductor. Let's talk about electrical neutrality first. I will explain electrical neutrality with one example. Then we will move to charge densities in a semiconductor. So first topic today is electrical neutrality. Electrical neutrality. We will try to understand electrical neutrality by one example. Let's take a copper wire. This is our copper wire and as we already know copper is a good conductor and hence there is a generous flow of charge when the potential difference is applied across this wire. This is the potential difference a 5 volt battery and uh, there is a current I in this direction. Now this copper wire is electrically neutral. This wire is not charged but is neutral. I can say this because I know the number of electrons entering this copper wire is same as the number of electrons leaving this copper wire. For example, let's say 100 electrons are entering this copper wire at time t and uh, 100 electrons are also leaving this copper wire at time t which makes this copper wire electrically neutral because no charge is contained in this wire but if it doesn't follow the electrical neutrality then what will happen let's say 100 electrons are entering this copper wire but only 50 electrons are leaving so 50 electrons are still in this copper wire and because of this 50 electrons this copper wire is charged so the electrical neutrality is a very important concept and it is followed in case of conductor as well as in case of semiconductors so electrical neutrality is satisfied by semiconductors also let me write this point down electrical neutrality is satisfied by semiconductors also let us consider a semiconductor material and consider a situation where this material is doped by both n type and p type impurity material so this is our semiconductor material and it is doped by both n type and p type impurity materials now we have already seen that electrical neutrality is satisfied by semiconductors also then i can say that i can say that the total the total positive charge is equal to total negative charge this is how we can define electrical neutrality in case of semiconductors if total positive charge is more as compared to the negative charge then this piece of semiconductor material is going to be charged in the same way if total negative charge is more as compared to the total positive charge then also this piece of material will be charged so for electrical neutrality this condition must be followed now we are going to add the impurity materials both n type and p type so we have positive donor ions and we have negative donor ions let me draw them quickly okay and uh, let's say n d and subscript d is the concentration of donor atoms and uh, n subscript a is the concentration of acceptor atoms small p is whole concentration and small n is electron concentration now what is the total positive charge in this semiconductor material it would be it would be n d plus small p n subscript d is the concentration of donor atoms and they are positively charged 
Small p is the concentration of holes and in the last presentation we saw holes are similar to the positive charge. So the total positive charge is n subscript d plus small p. In the same way the total negative charge is n subscript a plus small n. So this is a very important relation that we have derived and we are going to use this relation to find out the charge densities in semiconductor. Now you have a clear idea why we have to study electrical neutrality first before going to the charge densities so that we have this relation in our hand. Let's say this is equation number one. Now we have two cases we have two cases case number one in case number one we will consider an n type material we will consider n type material we get an n type material when we dope the pure semiconductor or the intrinsic semiconductor with a pentavalent impurity so in this case only a pentavalent impurity is added to the pure semiconductor, no trivalent impurity. And hence we have, hence we have Na equals to zero. There is no acceptor ion because we have a N type material. Uh, you already know these things. And uh, we can put this Na equals to zero in this equation number one. So from equation number one, we can write n subscript d plus small p equals to small n because n a is zero or I can write n subscript d equals to small n minus p. We are considering the case of n type material so it is very obvious that the concentration of electrons small n is going to be more as compared to the concentration of holes so we can neglect this p and uh, we will have n subscript d e nearly equals to small n. So this is what we have derived in case number one. And for a better understanding, I'm going to write this like small n having subscript small n nearly equal to n subscript d. This n subscript small n is the electron concentration in n type material small n is the concentration of electrons and uh, small n having the subscript small n is the concentration of electron in n type material this is specified for n type material so this is what you have to remember and uh, now we will use the mass action law that we derived in the last presentation the mass action law says n p equals to n i square this is what we derived in the last presentation and we will use these two relations to find out the whole concentration in n type material so i will write down this mass action law as small n subscript small n small p subscript small n equals to n i square and uh, this is for n type material that's why i have used small n as subscript for n and p now i will write down n subscript d in place of small n subscript n because uh, we know in case of n type material the electron concentration is approximately equal to the density of donor atoms and d is the density of donor atom so we can write n subscript d p subscript n equals to n i square and uh, let us divide both the sides by n d and uh, this will give us small p subscript small n equals to n i square by n subscript d so this is the end result for uh, this case number one we will use this in numericals so please remember this now we will move to case number two and in case number two in case number two we will consider we will consider 
p type material and uh, the derivation is going to be really simple because we have just derived for n type material and we are going to use the same concept in case of p type material we add trivalent impurity so we have holes and thus we are going to have n a we will have the acceptor atoms but we don't have the donor atoms so n d is going to be uh, zero and uh, we will use the equation number one and uh, we have zero plus small p equals to n a plus small n or i can write n a equals to p minus n as this is p type material it is very obvious that the concentration of holes p is going to be greater as compared to the concentration of electrons so we can definitely neglect the concentration of electrons in this case and uh, small p is nearly equal to the concentration of acceptor atoms again i'm going to modify this in order uh, to remember that it is for p type i'm going to use a subscript p i'm going to use a subscript p here and uh, we will use mass section law again to have the concentration of electrons in p type material mass section law says n subscript p p subscript p is equal to n i square okay this p is for the p type material and uh, n subscript p we can write p subscript p as n a so we have n a so n i square n subscript p is equal to n i square by n a we have divided both the sides by n a to get over and a result so in this presentation the important points to remember are these two results we will use these results in numerical problems and uh, the electrical neutrality the concept of electrical neutrality not only in case of semiconductors but also in case of conductors 